Hey, good morning, YouTube. It is uh, May 18th. Uh, it's about uh, 9.30 on Wednesday. Just wanted to do an update for a uh, previous vid I put out, Earthquakes Are on the Rise. And this is more specifically for the U.S. just because of the information that comes out on the USGS. And uh, so anyways, yeah. Um, lots of you folks have seen this program. It's the Earthquake 3D program. Uh, one thing I just want to note, anybody that's been watching or using this program or looking at Dutch census videos since probably before January, at least definitely before March, one thing you notice is, I mean, you really can't even look at this program anymore on the highest setting for dates. You know, this is a day, but it gets to the point where, you know, it's crazy. Um, and I started uh, monitoring the USGS because a poster had put on there that, you know, maybe you should start actually recording these things uh, so we can actually see an increase. So that's why I started doing it. But again, when you look at this program, um, it really is. The Ring of Fire has been huge. Uh, it's tough to pinpoint and target even when you trim down the, the little rings of the quake to see. You know, typical areas, Alaska, California, they've always got theirs. Japan now is constantly on the, on the rise. All the areas around the... Um, uh, the merging plates there around Australia, um, all the areas around, um, uh, I guess, what is that, Puerto Rico and that, um, even down along um, South America. And they're all typically now in the fours, the fives, the sixes. You still get these massive earthquakes. Uh, I guess that's the fives, just about fives. There's your fives. Um, it's crazy. There's, uh, there's quite a few, the two points. 2.8 is showing up just because it just happened. But uh, anyways, um, I'm not going to go into this program. You can see lots of other folks that have put out stuff on it. Um, again, I originally started doing this uh, for the um, for the latest earthquakes. And um, I started recording all the information. Now, this, this uh, one that comes from the USGS website is their latest earthquakes for the past seven days. And it's the 2.5s or greater for the U.S. And it's 4.5s or greater for the rest of the world. So that's great, but you're not you're not catching a lot of the information. And you can find in uh, through the uh, USGS website that they do actually post for the U.S. only the um, uh, latest earthquakes with a one plus zero magnitude for the past seven days. And it's the only one that records all those little ones, you know, anything to the 1.9s, the 2.4s, that sort of a thing, where it'll actually give you that information. So I'd been plotting all this in, in Excel and uh, essentially just copying and pasting all the information and converting it into a table and, and then throwing some charts up. So I'll show you that in a sec. Um, I wanted to find on here the... Uh, um, is it real-time worldwide? No, that just gives you all of it. Sorry, I was going to just try and find something, but I'll skip it. I'll try one more. There we go. It's our earthquake statistics. Uh, this is originally where I started looking for information. It was just on the left-hand side there, earthquake lists and maps. It gives you sort of what the occurrence, uh, the frequency of the occurrence of the earthquakes. And they used to do this uh, worldwide up till 2009, and I guess just it was becoming becoming too much for them to do the entire world, so they still report on a few in the world, um, as you can obviously see here. Uh, but again, it's tough to tell, like, what kind of increases are they having because they've stopped monitoring the data uh, since January 2009. So I started doing it based on the number of earthquakes just for the U.S. because they are maintaining that and they are recording that. Uh, this one, they say, uh, updated as of the 18th of May for these figures for 2011. And essentially, like I say, I've, I've just plotted all this information as well as have now been plotting the uh, the individual information for that latest magnitudes of 1 plus, and again, it's just for the U.S. So I started doing this partly because the subscriber had said, hey, plot this and, and let us see it. And the other reason why I started doing it was there was a ton of people noticing that just information was disappearing, uh, quakes specifically were disappearing off of those lists and uh, was just, you know, sort of not being reported by the USGS. So I kind of wanted to, to see if I could uh, monitor that myself and, uh, and call bullshit where needed. So anyways, um, you may have seen this. Uh, this 
I started back in March 27th. It is now uh, May the 14th was when I last updated this. And essentially, like I say, I copy and paste it, drop it in here and report with the magnitudes and dates and times, latitudes, the depths and the states and throw some filters on so that I can actually look at specific, uh, you know, if I want to specifically look at a, at a range of magnitudes and, and compare what they're reporting, I can do that. And then at the very bottom, if I scan all the way down, so that was up till May 14th. So far, total earthquakes I've got for the U.S., which will include Mexico, and there's a couple in there for Canada, is 6,013. And again, that's only 49 days. Um, just got a quick formula that, that uh, tells me what it's been since March the 27th. And, you know, based on 365 days of the year, we've done 13% of the year so far. And dividing that into the quakes we've had so far means we're trending for about 44 and a half thousand quakes you know some of these are small but some of them are are also uh, substantially larger so um, one thing to note here you know if I want to take a peek and see what that USGS is reporting and if I go back to that uh, to that earthquake lists and maps So this here is the number of earthquakes for the U.S. and I just want to look specifically at 2011 and this is for what they say was updated as of May 18th you know let's look at the decent size range I don't like to look at the 1 to 1.9s because they do remove information off that site uh, it could be because it's near construction it's you know somebody's putting up something down by the pier and they're pile driving into the water and it's going to definitely give you some seismic activity on the on the seismogram so um, if we look at something like a 2 to a 2.9, they're reporting 763. A lot of these 613, if I quickly throw a custom filter on, and I say just give me everything greater than or equal to uh, 2.0 to a 2.9. So I'll go less than or equal to a 2.9. So it's going to be greater than 2, less than 2.9, or equal. And it shows me here I've got 1,514. And, you know, if I quickly scan up, it definitely shows these are all 2s, 2.1s, 2.5s, 2.7s, and all, all the areas. So, again, that's where I, I don't, I know for sure they're removing stuff. I mean, it shows right there, 763. So, they're definitely removing information. Uh, that's about half of what I'm showing. And this total that you're seeing here is for five and a half months and what I'm showing for is one and a half months um, 49 days so I definitely think that they are removing information and again I just I can't see see why unless they're just trying to lie to the public anyways the other thing I've done uh, done with this information um, I had fixed my chart I just had a little date screw up down here but uh, you can see here, this is the information. I updated this on, uh, on Monday the 16th, and these were the figures that were here. Uh, and as you go through, I mean, you can see that this is increasing. And, and from 2000 until 2010, the difference here of 8,213, you know, even just from the previous year, 4,262. And I noted before, it's not like in the year you know, 2010, they added a crap load of, uh, of seismograph equipment. It's just that we are seeing more and more increases in, uh, in earthquakes. And it's not even like, you know, there's some definite increases when you're looking from twos, uh, from the 2 to 2.9 range to the, you know, from 2009 to 2010. But you're also seeing this. I mean, this is almost uh, was 250% for the 4s to the 4.9s. So those are big jumps. Um, you know, we're still fairly consistent on some of the higher ranges. But, again, overall, I think we're going to see this number way up over last year. Um, anyways, I split all these out and just looked at what the magnitudes were for each individual one, as well as uh, plotted the quake magnitudes and split it out. So. I've got each year going back, oh, that was Earthquake 3D, just binging up another one, uh, 3.0 after that, that's a little tiny one, nah, it's nothing, barely felt the shaking, anyways, uh, again, this uh, this front row 
all the purples is the year 2000, 2001, 2, 3, 4, all the way back to 2011. And I did just start plotting that, uh, that info is in there now. And what the individual uh, range is going from the, from the left side to the right side, these were the no magnitudes, uh, your smaller ones and your bigger ones. And again, even the individual breakdowns, this range here being the um, 2 to 2.9, for 2010 over, you know, so there was 3,978 for 2010 in that 2 to 2.9 range. And in 2009, there was only 2,300. So huge difference. Um, same thing with the 3 to 3.9, 1,400 for 2009 and 3,491 for, th for 2010. Um, it's interesting when you start seeing them on graphs. So uh, the only other qu uh, last question quick couple of things. Uh, this is essentially, I just grabbed today's data uh, from yesterday. And, you know, again, I essentially plug it in here. I'll take my information, split it out so that it's easy to see um, individual locations if somebody wants to know. Um, you know, it's easy to take things, move the, um, the states over, basically text the columns. So I won't get into Excel here, but uh, it's handy because if you just want to pull down a certain region, I can you know, pull this down and oh, I've got my filter on for my magnitudes. You know, I've only got nine uh, showing up for my Canadian area. But again, it's nice. It does show, show those ranges that do get reported there. Um, you know, somebody was looking specifically for an area, say Idaho, there was 22. And it's good because then you can actually look and go, okay, well, what the hell's going on in Spencer? You know, this is the majority of these quakes here. They're quite small, but they, you know, ended up having a few that were, there's a 4.1 there, uh, 2.5. So if you want to do a little further research, that's what I would do. I'm going to actually do another video after this one, uh, just because of, of the increases in uh, California, and I'll, I'll get into that in the next one. But uh, it was interesting, some of the things I found after going through this kind of information, and then taking that and going and looking in um, Google Earth and finding the kind of, you know, pinpointing the area and then looking for things like, you know, is there mining going on there? Uh, you know, is there fracking going on there? Is there geothermal issues going on there? So, anyways, we'll get into that in the next one. Um, so that was how I uh, manipulate the data that's here. And the last thing I started doing then was just creating a, I just call it a earthquake sub, and uh, what it is is I just subtotal all the individual weeks. So at the end of each week now, I'm taking that information, splitting it out to just the EQs per week. And it's nice because then I can actually look at, so sorry, what I'll do is I'll subtotal each, uh, each week and then I'll resort these again by state and then I'll resort them by um, uh, magnitude and numbers. So each week I can look at which was the the worst state for earthquakes and which ones are trending higher and lower you know like here we've got Nevada which is in that Hawthorne area is typically over the last little while been getting worse and worse um, mid 90 for Nevada that week um, 60 that week uh, 88 the week before that um, but again it's nice because what I can do is expand one of these columns. I'm not going to expand California because it's got 334, but if I just want to look, okay, what area in Texas here have we got? Okay, so these look like they're all around Hancock, most of them, and these are 3.5, 3.4, 3.3, 3.2. Again, it's sorted by the state, also by magnitude, so you can quickly see your highest, your highest region there, what it had. So uh, I've been breaking this out for each week. There was only one week that I missed partial data and again all the same data comes from the same information that all comes from this um, that 1.0 earthquake list all from here so if it gives you the 3.2s the 3.0s that sort of thing and uh, anyways once I scroll down I did another quick graph on this one um, just to show these totals. So again, I started this on the 27th, so I missed the first uh, the first uh, the first week that I started reporting on this. It was really only a partial week, and so these are each of the weeks as we go along. You know, 422, 
I don't know if that was planetary alignments or full moons or whatever, but it was definitely a high week there. And I'm going to keep plotting these out for the, for you know, the rest of the year and keep maintaining this data. I kind of find it interesting, and it gives me a little bit more research information to go by. So, anyways, uh, one last thing. Um, lots of people have noticed too. I think when you you're looking through these, that especially when you look at this 7.0 for the world or the seven day. 2.5 US, 4.5 rest of the world. Anybody that used to look at this information regularly, it's amazing. There's not a day that goes by now where half the information isn't in black, which means that it's it's a substantial earthquake, 4.5 or greater. And in this last week, we've had tons that are in the red, which are 6.0s and bigger. You know, you scroll down and every other page it's got it, and, and half of them are in black. So I think the size and magnitude are also increasing. And uh, Again, you can see that it's, it dominates the, not the mainstream media, but uh, most of our uh, our YouTube media, that's for sure. Anyways, uh, look for the next one. You'll see some interesting info in California. Other than that, stay safe and uh, keep your bug out bags handy. Peace.